Hello, hello. Welcome to Graveyard Tours. Uh, I'm in uh, Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Let me give you a view here. This is where the great flood of Johnstown, the first flood, the 1898 flood, happened right here. So I'm going to give you, this is going to be a little documentary. I'm going to do different videos and combine them all together. This was here was the Ugger House, uh, the manager of the Fishing and Hunting Club that where this whole uh, flood started. So this is uh, the house. They use it as an office now. Uh, there's no tours inside here. And uh, so uh, I'm gonna show you also different videos put together, the dam. I'm gonna walk out to the dam, so stay tuned. Uh, please subscribe, hit the like button if you would. And here's the old barn. So just give you an overview. I'm going to walk to the dam too. Uh, like I said, there's going to be a bunch of short videos put together. So stay tuned if you would and watch the whole thing. Okay, so again, this is the manager's house. Uh, the caretaker manager's house right here. And he was the one in charge of trying to save the dam from breaking in the first place. So this whole valley area here that you see, you get a better perspective when I get over to the dam. Is this was a lake? This was the lake right here. Well, it where uh, was filled with water, it burst and flooded many towns down south of there. So, if you see way down there, there's a highway, you see a little bridge there. That's the end of that's where the dam is. That's part of the dam where that bridge is, where that little uh deck is sitting there. That's the the end of the dam, uh, and so. So there, and then to the left right there, that was the dam, that area right there. And you see the other side where the dam was. So there's another deck on the other side, connects to that side, and that was the dam. The earth, it was an earthen dam, so it was never made right in the first place. And when they did make it right, they made it weak over the years. So anyway, so stay tuned, folks, and uh, I'll show you where the big, great Johnstown flood happened. This is, like I said, it'll be a documentary. We're gonna to go to the graveyard too. I'd uh, probably the graveyard video might be first. So yeah, and this is the museum here. I've been in here several times. Really cool museum. I don't wanna, uh, they won't let me film in there. So I don't wanna pay, I can't film. I can only take pictures and to me it's not worth it. I've been in there like three, four times already. So just to let you know, if you guys decide to come here, it's definitely worth it. Uh, we're going to do this spot. We're going to do the graveyard where the lost souls are 777 lost souls at a graveyard. And uh, it's actually many more than that, really, to be honest with you. But they just they made it a round number, I guess. I'm not sure. Anyway, and then also we're going to go. They have another museum downtown Johnstown. We're going to go to the outside of there. And uh, we're also going to go to the famous haunted bridge of Johnstown. Where most of the deaths, occur, a lot of the deaths occurred actually, not most, just, you know, a lot. People burned alive at the bridge. But we'll show you all this, we're gonna put it all together. So I'm gonna sign off right now, but stay tuned because uh, I'm gonna walk down to the dam, uh, show you where that all started. And it's a little bit of a walk and I don't wanna videotape the whole thing, it'd be too long. So yeah, so also I ask you to please subscribe Hit that like button if you would, and uh, and stay tuned for more. Signing out for now. Okay, so now I'm at the bottom. This is where the water level was. Up there, on top of the hill, beyond yonder there is the museum and the house. And it, it's a little complicated getting here. They don't really put up a lot of signage out here. So, if you see that, let me see, hold on. I can't get this thing, okay, that's it. So anyway, okay, so if you see here, 
I gotta walk to the dam, which is way over there across that little bridge here. So th it doesn't look like much, but it's actually a lot deeper than you, you imagine. And of course this railway track wasn't there and that bridge wasn't there. You see that highway bridge there? So that wasn't there, but here's part of the dam right there. So I'm gonna walk it, stay, if you can uh, stay with me folks. Sorry about the, uh, sorry about the, uh, the long uh, walk here, but I just wanted you to get an idea, if you bear with me, get an idea of how big this place really is. So like I said, this was all, like right here was the water line, okay? So about where this trail is, just maybe a couple feet from where this trail is, was the water line. So it, I would estimate here probably be a good 40, 50 feet deep. So it doesn't sound like much, but when you look out way out over there, that whole thing was filled. I don't know how far it goes back there, but that was the lake for the hunt and fishing club. And uh, Carnegie owned a house out here. We're gonna go do that too. We're gonna find the cottages of the members uh, where they, uh, where they, you know, they there was their summer cottages. Beautiful homes, I've seen them before. A little hard to find. So if you decide to come out here, it's worth the, it's worth the while. Um, it doesn't really cost a lot to go in the museum. I think it's like $10, $12 a person. And um, it's worth it because they have great, it's like a museum, you know, it's, it's a museum. But it's really cool and there's a lot of history in there lots of stuff to read you probably spent a good three four hours in there easily and that's just one stop but if you really want to see all of it you got to go downtown johnstown see where the flood is you got to go to the flood museum downtown you got to see the haunted bridge and of course we're going to also see the graveyard because this is graveyard tours and uh we're going to see where most of the unknown victims we're buried so just bear with me so yeah it's pretty uh it's pretty deep actually and here is the rest of the the dam again it was an earth earth built dam and uh didn't hold and the history of it they they took out the drainage tubes everything that you could do wrong they did it here you know so that's what caused it and uh they even had where this bridge is, where we're coming up on this bridge, was the, they had screens. So what they did, they didn't want the fish to escape. So this was like the, uh, the escape way right here. So if the water got too high, which it did, because it rained like crazy, then <clears throat> the water could escape here, which uh, this was like a drainage area. So once it got, you know, if it got up to this level where this, uh, uh, these weeds are here, then it would start draining through here and wouldn't affect the dam itself. But what they did, they put screens up here so the fish wouldn't escape. And that's, and then that blocked, that got blocked with a bunch of branches and everything. And so the water couldn't escape. So all the pressure went right onto this dam. And then of course we know what happened. So. This was the escape way right here, which again, the spillway actually here. Here's what they. I'll take a picture of this folks because you can take your time to read it. So this was the spillway, okay? So I'll take a picture of it and right here. The spillway still here. Of course it never was used properly and then they, when they put the screens up, it blocked everything. So the spillway didn't even work. And they even said the spillway wasn't adequate enough, but it definitely would have saved uh, some, a lot more time. Uh, it probably might have, might have, uh, might have not caused the flood, to, uh, the great flood to happen. But the problem was they, again, they took the spillway tubes out. They did everything wrong, everything wrong. They did it. So that's what caused the great flood. So, so the spillway would go behind this hill here and then it would, you know, allow the water to come around and spill down into, back into the ravine, into the river. Still would have caused some flooding, I think, but 
the dam wouldn't have broke if everything was done properly. But even they said that the dam was never built right in the first place, so. And they just, they didn't maintain it well because uh, it became a private uh, ownership to the hunting and the fish club. So they were trying to save money. So they did everything they could to save money. And uh, so they're, they're, they're the ones that were responsible for causing the great flood. Of course, nobody went to jail for it. They all got found not guilty. So anyway, all the history is uh, in that museum. The museum that's back over there. Okay, so folks, this is where it happened, right here. I'm actually walking on the dam right now. Okay, so. It was just amazing. Now from here, you get a very better, a better view of how deep this lake really was. And here it goes. Almost there. Okay, so we're at the end of the dam, and over there is where it would continue, where it continued. Of course, here's the river that the spillway was supposed to, you know, take care of the river. So from here, you definitely get a good view of how deep this was. Like I said, it to me, I'm guesstimating a good 50 feet, probably more. And I don't know if that was the deepest. And it went way beyond where well, you can see the railway cars sitting on their tracks there. The sun's in my eyes, so I can't really. Okay, so let's follow the tracks. So you see the cars sitting there. So there's that corner back there that turned. It even, the lake even went way beyond there. So we're talking. <laughs> I don't even want to pretend I can guess how many tons of water that uh, uh, broke this dam here. This was where the dam was exactly right here. And then of course, all the water come rushing down, killed thousands upon thousands of people, wiped out towns, whole towns. Like I said, the, the museum, the, both museums, uh, the one that's here and the one downtown in Johnstown, you gotta do both of them and of course this site here. And then of course, uh, they had the Grand Grandview Cemetery is where we're gonna go also. And we're gonna show uh, the unknown graves. Um, like I said, it's, the numbers are, they, they have numbered at 777, but everybody knows that that's not the real number. It could be over a thousand. They, you know, the records weren't so great back in those days. So uh, I just hope, uh, you know, this, this gives you a better idea of how this flood really happened. And like I said, if you get a chance, come out here, do go to both of these museums, um, Go to downtown Johnstown where the flood happened, where most of the people died. Other other towns got wiped out too, and other people died in those towns also. But Johnstown has got hit the more, the worst because it was, you know, I think the very first town, probably wasn't the first town, but it's. Uh, but anyway, the other towns, some of the towns got spared a little bit because they were kind of on a hill, on a mountain, so they got a little spared. But Johnstown got it the worst. The flood even went all the way all the way to Pittsburgh. So just to let you know. So this is it, folks. This is it. And, uh, and of course, you can see, like, you know, this is surrounded by a, a valley. I mean, uh, mountains on both sides, big hills. Wouldn't really call it mountains, but... So imagine all this water, tons and tons of water. I mean, I, I can't even guesstimate. They, they actually have a... They tell you the numbers in the museums, which I don't remember. Anyway, imagine it, it just breaks this dam right here and everything just goes down in a funnel because look at this. You got mount, uh, hills on both sides. So this water, it, oh my God. I mean, I, I could imagine. <laughs> I, could, I mean, it's not even funny, but I'm, I'm chuckling as a nervous laugh. So anyway, folks, I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, stay tuned because I'm going to keep adding other uh, small, short films on this all into one is is it'll be i guess i don't know a short documentary but finally we will of course go to the cemetery and that's because uh you know the the channel is titled uh graveyard tours and i hope you do subscribe and, and i hope you guys like these videos that i'm doing i'm getting enough subscribers now to make it worth my while and uh it's, i'm actually you know i'm still having fun doing this so that's it folks and uh watch out for the pictures too because i'm going to put a bunch of pictures on it so you can pause the video and uh watch the pictures on your own time 
Okay, uh, stay tuned because next we're going to go to the cottages and the clubhouse of the rich people. I mean, we're talking Carnegie and, and all the, whew, I don't even know the names. Uh, lots of names, lots of big names that uh, in the early uh, century that uh, everybody who was a somebody probably had a cottage out here. So we're going to go find those cottages next, folks, and we'll post it with this video. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, welcome back, Graveyard Tours. This is the clubhouse of the South Fork Dam. Uh, I'm gonna take pictures, and that way you can see, pause and read everything. So let's, uh, I'll just shoot this really quick. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the clubhouse. This is where all the millionaires, millionaires, multi-millionaires came, maybe even some billionaires, I don't know. So, John Sound Flood National Memorial. South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club. Construction date unknown. It was 1800s, obviously. But here, let me get, do a pan out here. Pretty big place. Now, they do tours here, but with reservations. Um, I think they just do it for like schools and stuff because uh, I've been here several times and every time I've come here, uh, you don't really see anybody here doing any tours. So I think they also use it as offices and stuff. So I'm gonna do the best I can to try to shoot some interior views here if I can, folks. Uh, they got blinds, they got blinds up. Let me go to the front. Oh, here's something. Obviously, they don't want people here snooping around too much, but here we go. Now, I've never been inside, but I've been around this, and it's really beautiful. I don't know what you guys can see. There's a fireplace. I mean, it is immaculate inside. Absolutely beautiful. So... I'll try to show you some more. Yeah, it's really, really cool in here. So they even said, okay, you know, there's a town here now. Um, they, I don't know how much of this town was here. Because uh, we're going to go to the cottages, too. Okay, there's a bunch of the cottages. Now, interestingly, these cottages who were owned by the club members, they were, you know, just like, uh, you know, summer houses and stuff. Um, they buried the information of who owned which cottage. And some of the millionaires who owned the cottages, and we're talking big names here, Carnegie and, you know, whatever. Um all the records got uh, mysteriously disappeared most of the records so most of the people don't even know and they to this day they don't really know who owned what and uh, and a lot of the uh, people who own these how uh, cottages never came back to claim them they just said nope don't I don't want you to know who I am I'll just take it as a, a wash and they didn't uh, they didn't come back to claim the property so there was so much you know uh, illegal stuff going on that uh, they, that's what they did they, they didn't I, I Carnegie was known because he he was in the papers and I think it was Carnegie he was one of the main ones but he wasn't a bad guy I'm not saying he was a bad guy he just uh, was a cottage owner I think he had his mother live in one of these cottages. The cottages um, are absolutely beautiful too just to let you know uh, yeah I mean the cottages are beautiful so Anyway, I can't really see much in here because they got, you know, everything is 
Uh, everything is covered up. Looks like they're still working in there. They're still doing uh, repairs. I don't know how much of that you saw, because um, I'm not supposed to be doing this, so I can't stay much longer. There's a there's a worker here too. So, yeah. So this is it. And also, you know, they had their uh, these rich guys out here, these multimillionaires. You know, they had their lovers stay at a hotel also. So whenever they brought their families here, they would sneak off and go see their... Uh... These are the stories that you, you hear about uh, when you do the research on this. Anyway, folks, that is it. I'm going to sign off and then I'm going to uh, show you where the, some of these beautiful cottages that are still existing. Uh, not all of them are existing. Some of them still are, though. And they're historic uh, places. But, uh, but again, like I said, I don't... You know, you see this town... I would imagine most of this town wasn't here at the time, but I don't really know. So anyway, folks, signing off. Stay tuned for more. Uh, hit that subscribe button for me, folks. Here's one of the cottages. So okay, so you see, they don't tell you whose house they belong to. These are all private homes now, so um, I'm sure they don't really appreciate people coming around filming. So I'm going to be really quick. This is just one of the cottages. Like I said, they're all different. They're all unique. They all have their own style and, and they're beautiful. So let me just walk down here. Uh, like I said, hopefully I'll piss somebody off here, but uh, I'm gonna do as much as I can here for you all. And this is another cottage right here. Again, no names, you know, no names on these cottages. So, so nobody knows who owns these cottages. Okay, I'm gonna film some more cottages and be right back. Okay, folks, here's another one. This one not so nice as the other ones, but there's more. And that, you know, the historic, uh, they, they just say that it was once owned by a member of the South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club. And that's all it says. But going up here, these are where the most beautiful ones are up this little road here. We're gonna go up there in one minute. Stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. I'm gonna finish off these cottages. This one is very, very beautiful here. I mean, look at the style of this. Now, this is private property. I can't go beyond this fence here. So, but, I mean, that's just, I mean. Again, nobody knows which, who, who owned which house because the owners don't want you to know. They didn't want you to know. They, now this one here is, is empty. So we're gonna, and of course, this this one I think is the only one um, that belongs to uh, the state or the government of Johnstown. So let's let's uh, we can't go in here. It's it's been like this for years. I've seen this years ago. Uh, what does it say? This Victorian Queen Anne Shingle style building once accommodated a member of the South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club. Construction date unknown. You know why it's unknown? Cause they burnt all the papers and nobody wanted you to find out well i mean the the owners didn't want you to find out like i said none of these i think most of these cottages never got claimed maybe one or two did and i'm sure there was a couple of them that uh if i remember in my history correct that some of these buildings didn't make it they they fell in dis, disrepair like this one because they didn't come back the owners didn't come back to uh uh claim the property they just let it go in disrepair and the government can't just take it over it takes them a while to say okay we're gonna you know take it over for tax purpose reasons or whatever you know um and that's what happened so some of these some of these houses literally uh just fell into disarray and got destroyed you know just just got condemned but thank god some of them survived here's one of the most really nice ones here and yeah, look at all that gingerbread work there it's really cool and so i'm assuming that uh you know, all these houses got taken over by the government and then got sold for tax purposes. Uh, and then, of course, they got sold to the highest bidder. Uh, beautiful houses, though. So, and again, these are all private residences. And it says here, what does this say? 
All right, so it says this stick style building once served as a cottage for a member of the South Fork Fish and Hunting Club, likely James W. Brown. Okay, built circa 1888. So there is, it says likely, they don't really know, but it's absolutely beautiful. And whoever owns, I mean, it's just take, doing a really good job taking care of it. It's absolutely, I mean, look at all the different paints here that you got to, meticulously paint the red and then the green and the white and don't blend them together I mean that's that's a lot of work and it, it's very costly to upkeep one of these houses so but you know some people are doing it but anyway so that's it that's really this is the end of it so most of the cottages fell into disrepair uh, because back in those days you know people were just angry and uh, you know they were trying to take some people to court uh, and nobody, nobody did any, got found guilty of anything for this whole sham that, that what, what it was. Uh, but, uh, so it looks like that somebody did live in this house for a while and then, uh, I don't know what happened. So anyway, yeah, I mean, I wish they would fix this one up, but it's, it's this has been sitting here like this for years. I came here, uh, I don't know, you know, probably seven, eight, ten years ago or something like that. I, I have no idea. I can't remember. I've been here several times. And every time I come here, I like to stop by and, and look. And, and nothing has been done since the last time I was here. So that's it, folks. So it's a little bit difficult to find. But once you find the main museum, you just go around uh, the lake and you can find it. You get a map and uh, you, you can find it. And that's it. So we're going to go visit the other places. So stay tuned. Uh, hit that subscribe button, that like button if you would. Uh, I hope I'm doing a good job for you guys. I hope you're liking these videos. Again, these are going to be all put together. We're not done yet. we still got more places to go. So stay tuned. Uh, watch the rest of the video. Okay, Bye. welcome back. So now, uh, the some of the information is that this was possibly the hotel. Uh, we're just one street over. If you go, it's a busy little street, believe it or not, for a small little town. One street up there, that street there, and you make a left, those were the cottages, and the clubhouse was on the right hand side. So, the speculation is that this was the hotel uh, that was here when the cottages, when the hunt and fishing club was here, and that uh, uh, this is where they kept their lovers the the men kept their women uh you know for kept the families in the cottage houses and then came in here and visited the uh the side uh side uh action here so and who knows maybe it was a brothel see again the records were destroyed they didn't want anybody to know so uh we're gonna go search this town a little bit more so we find any more hidden secrets here but now i obviously you can see it's a bar on the bottom and then there's apartments on the top until, okay, stay tuned. Okay, here's another cottage that's uh, being worked on. And I believe this one says construction date unknown. It just says the same thing as the rest of them that uh, this was owned by a club member. And that's all it says. But this is uh, really cool. So let's see if we can uh, see anything on the inside. Again, I'm not supposed to be doing these things, so I might get chased away. And I got a, a, a knee that's giving me some problems. <laughs> okay, so let's see if we can peek inside a little bit here. Can't really see much. It's just a small hallway and there's blinds on everything. And we got workers here, so I'm gonna bug on out of here. But really cool, another really cool cottage. Look at the detail. They put detail in everything. Stay tuned folks for more. And here's another cottage. So I lost count. I think there's probably less than 10 of these cottages that are still here. That's the one we just saw. 
there's workers in there and then all the blinds are closed I mean you can't really see much but that this cottage here is pretty big it's actually really big so who who knows who owns that one let's see if we can find some more and I think this is the last one we're gonna find folks this is uh, was a single family home uh, a cottage and here's the historic marker there of course none of them say whose house they belong to only one of them speculated whose houses were uh, which one but uh, yeah this one looks like it was turned into a rental or something I don't know it looks like now it's two places so anyway stay tuned for more folks I got more coming up stay tuned okay welcome back um, now I am on the south side of the dam the, I've never been here actually this is new for me too so we are on the south side Basically, we were over there. There is the Unger, the Unger house, which was the manager caretaker house, way up there. And then the museum is there. And this is the, called the South Side. And also, there's a bunch of placards uh, I'm going to take pictures of that are down here. It's a trail that goes down to the valley down here. I'll take, uh, there's one way down there. So anyway, I'll, I will take pictures of everything so you guys can get a, uh, you can pause the video and read, read everything if you want. So yeah, this is the south side, folks. Uh, again, this is new for me too. This is part of the dam right here. This hill was the dam. If you can see it with all the, it wasn't that wide. I mean, it really looks about, I don't know, 20 some feet wide, but there's the other side of the dam that we were on earlier. Okay, and uh, and of course the river that fed the lake, I think it's called uh, Conoma, Conoma River, I believe. So all this was uh, the lake. This is just part of, you can actually see more of the lake part. And that first hill where you see the trail, that was the spillway over there. Okay, and that's basically where the water level was, almost to that spillway. And you know, we I explained how that worked, that they clogged that up with screens so the fish wouldn't escape, so the so the good people wouldn't uh, miss out on their fishing. <laughs> I'm being a little sarcastic, but uh, I mean this was a, a devastating uh, event that happened here. So and this is where it happened, folks. So I'm gonna pause the video, stay tuned because I'm gonna. Uh, walk down here to this valley and check out these placards which I've never uh, seen before so uh, I'm gonna pitch like I said I'm gonna picture up and film a little bit so stay tuned for more and uh, please hit the subscribe button thank you Okay, folks, welcome back. Uh, hope you stayed to watch all this. I have many more of short videos to put on. We're at the bot bottom of the valley here, and a bunch of the pictures. I so I read the deepest part of the lake, and I was a little close, a little off, but uh, 70 feet deep, about 65, 70 feet deep, they guesstimate. Uh, I pictured the information um, so you can read it. But yeah, so this is the bottom, where, and this is Lake. Uh, this is a uh, Panama River, I think it's called, and uh, this is what fed the lake. Of course, the rainstorms, when the rainstorms happened, um, because this was a dam and 
they, you know, the, this whole valley area is surrounded by mountains and hills, and when it poured down rain in, it, it just flooded everything. They said it was one foot an hour, the whole lake was rising. So here is a quick, the lake bed is 70 feet deep in some places, but uh, you must read this. Um, so if you get back to the picture area, which I'll, I, I think I'll put at the end of the video, you have to, you have to read this. Such was the price paid for fish. So again, the spillway, which could have saved everything, was clogged with screens. If you read it here, Colonel Unger and his men at the dam struggled to remove an iron screen attached to the bottom of the spillway bridge, but it was jammed with debris and would not budge. The screen had been installed years before to keep fish from escaping the lake. In the summer of 1881, the South Fork Fish and Hunting Club stocked lake with 1,000 black bass, which had been transported by special railway tank car from Lake Erie at a cost of about a dollar a fish. Okay, so read this poem. I'm going to read this because this is important. So uh, after the flood, people were particularly bitter about the fish screens. A man by the name of Isaac Reed wrote a popular poem at the time which began, Many thousand human lives, butchered husbands, slaughtered wives, mangled daughters, bleeding sons, host of martyred little ones, worse than heralds, awful crime, sent to heaven before their time. Lovers burnt and sweethearts drowned, darlings lost but never found. All the horrors that hell could wish, such was the price, was paid for fish. I mean, <laughs> that just says it all right there, you know? Okay, folks, uh, well, let, uh, I'll tell you what, just walk with me. Walk with me. We're, we might run into a bear. I have some bear spray, just in case. I've never seen a bear out here, but you never know. And usually the black bears, they're, they're more afraid of you than... Uh, you should be of them because they're, they're black bears. Uh, some of them can get three, four hundred pounds, even bigger than that. But uh, and I've I've seen a couple in my lifetime, so that's for sure. Anyway, so this is the bottom of it here, folks. Oh, right here is the dam. Right there is the dam. And uh, well, watch the pictures at the end of the video, and you know read read what you want. But I tell you, it's really cool to come out here. So here's some black eyed Susans. And some other. Anyway, yeah, uh, it's worth coming out here. If not, I hope this and this is part of the dam right here, folks. This hill right next to this trail that I'm walking. This is part of the dam that, of course, burst. So yeah, if if you guys can't get out here, I hope this does justice for you, so you can, uh, you know, uh, feel like you've been here. So there it is. This is all part of the dam, folks. And uh, of course it started out as a reservoir. Uh, so I'm going to uh, walk and then come back. I'll take pictures of this uh, so you guys can read it. Cause I haven't even read it. This is the first time I've been here too. So at least on this side, I, I've been on the other side and I hiked a little bit of trails back there. Uh, I don't know, a couple years ago. So. Yeah, there's more placards here to read, so I will, uh, yeah, I'm going to, like I said, so we are here, of course, after the flood hit. Anyway, I'll, again, I'll take pictures of all this stuff here, so. And you can even see some of the old uh, stone. Hold on, let me see. And also what they did, uh, here's some of the old stone work that a lot of the laborers, when uh, Unger woke up to the, and realized how bad the storm was, he called in for help. And he brought a lot of Italian immigrants, it said, and other laborers. And they just, uh, they brought uh, cartloads, you know, horse and buggy, uh, full of rocks and dirt and everything try to uh, try to uh, save the dam from bursting and some of these rocks that you see are probably done by them because there's a huge pile of it and that's what they did they came out here with all night long they were throwing rocks and debris and hay and everything they can get their hands on 
and trying to uh, help secure the dam, which it didn't, it didn't work. Uh, of course, we all know that. Okay, so. I'll just read this as a short one. No pen can describe. Well, the reservoir came and Johnstown went visiting. Some of us on very long visits indeed, never to come back. All that is left is to most of this is the ground the town was built on and even that is not the same. Johnstown Trivia in 1889. See, there's a guy sitting at the bottom of the lake after the dam burst, 72 feet. Elevation of dam. See, this is, we're on the south side, which is here. We're in the valley walking. Probably right close to where this... Actually, we're, we're beyond that. I don't know. Anyway, so that's it. This is where this is where the dam gave way. So, yeah. So that's it. I mean, this is... a. Uh, pretty remarkable that you can actually walk here you know where it, where it all happened so okay so we're going back uphill I'm gonna cut it and I'll take go back and take these pictures for you uh, take your time and read it because it's really interesting so yeah they they uh, they brought the laborers out here all night long they try to uh, because the spillway was clogged because of the people put grates up there to save the fish so their their precious fish wouldn't disappear <laughs> So the poem says it all, folks. It really does. Okay, stay tuned. There's more coming, so stay tuned. Keep watching. Uh, subscribe, too, please. Thank you. Okay, I'm at the end of the trail. End of the trail, then you gotta go up these uh, crazy flights of steps up here. But uh, I just needed to show you this because uh, this is a better view of where all the rocks and stuff were dumped. So they, they don't, uh, they discourage people climbing on the, uh, on the dam itself. But you can see all the rocks. And like I said, a lot of this was uh, placed during the night of the, the, the flood, the, the dam break, because uh, they wanted to uh, try to give some support to the dam, which it, it didn't work, obviously. And it looked like um, there was, again, I, I, I took pictures of everything. So I'm off the trail a little bit to show you those rocks. So let me just show you. It looks like, uh, if my math is correct, it was two, uh, 222 million tons of water, it looks like. Or 20 million, I'm sorry. Uh, my math is way up. 20 million tons of water. So that's it. But I took pictures of it, of this, uh, of this placard here. Yeah, that's it, folks. Okay, we're going to go on and uh, we'll go to downtown Flood Museum. We're going to do the cemetery. Uh, everything else so put it all together okay so stay tuned to the end thank you Okay, welcome back. Um, we're on the south side, and this is the Carriage Road Nature Trail. Basically, this is the road they would use to bring the carriages full of rocks, uh, dirt, hay, whatever they could grab, gather. So this uh, carriage road here basically takes you right to the dam, which we were already at. So this is the old original Carriage Road Trail. Just want to show you that, share that with you. All right, stay tuned. There's more to come. Okay, people, this is the 
Johnstown, downtown Johnstown Flood Museum. Uh, it's closed right now. I've been in it before. Uh, it's a beautiful old building. Uh, built in 1891 by Andrew Carnegie. I'm going to go around here. Uh, sidewalk is closed down. Let me go. Uh, So it was the Johnstown Public Library, erected by the Cambria Iron Works, destroyed by the flood, May 31st, 1889, rebuilt, enlarged, and improved by Andrew Carnegie, 1891. So uh, I believe he was one of the club members. I can't remember. So anyway, but anyway, so inside this uh, museum, um, it's really cool, actually. It's not that expensive. It's, I mean, it's like two or three stores. And if you go up to the third floor, I've been up to the third floor. It's the old uh, library and uh, recreation room. Now, I wanted to show you this. So this is, so you remember when uh, the hurricane hit, uh, Hurricane uh, uh, Katrina hit uh, New Orleans and, uh, and FEMA brought the, the famous FEMA trailers. Well, this was the famous Oklahoma house uh, before FEMA was introduced. So anyway, this Oklahoma house basically was, these houses were built and brought here. Now, I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm, I'm going to because this is part of the museum property and it's closed. So anyway, used as temporary housing for survivors of it. 1889 flood okay so basically it was their answer to help the homeless really cool they're very small I was inside here. So basically, um, you know, they they just uh, let them stay in these houses. And then what happened was interesting. They found this house. People were actually living in it, and I think it was the 1970s. And they found it and brought it here because uh, most of these houses got destroyed because they were so small and. Uh, Nobody cared about them, but these houses survived. Very few of them survived, and uh, this is one of the last surviving of the Oklahoma houses. I think there was like two. There might have been two or three of these uh, that survived, and this is one of them. Yeah, it's really cool though. So. And you can you can visit the if you come to the museum, you can actually uh, go in here too. So it's really cool. Okay, stay tuned, folks, because there's gonna be more. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm in front of City Hall just to show you guys real quick. So Johnstown is known for their floods. Okay, so actually I'm gonna have to back up a bit. The high water mark right there. And that's the 1898 flood. And there's the other high water mark, because there was three major floods here. It looks July 1927. And then of course, no, I'm sorry, there's, wait a minute, let me see here. There was three, okay, so it'd be in the beginning. This is Market Square. I'll take a picture of that. So, eight foot six inches, July 1977, and then 1936. Where's the 1936 one? Here it is. Okay, 1936 one, and then of course above that one is the the first flood. Okay, so I'm going. What I'm going to do is back up here. Mark 
Market Square, 1889. I'm going to picture all this, folks, so you can uh, uh, you can read it at your leisure. Okay, I'm going to cross the street and then uh, just okay, stay so tuned. So just to give you a better better view. Okay, so there's where I was. That's the 1977 flood. I can't remember 1930s flood. And there is the top one right there, the third one. That just get, look how high that was. I think it was like 18 feet, close to 18 feet high. It literally destroyed everything. Very few buildings survived this. But I'll just show you City Hall. Um, I was up in that bell tower before. Very nice, beautiful building. But this building didn't even survive. This was rebuilt. This building was rebuilt. Anyway, just to show you. Uh, how high the, the flood waters came. This is downtown Johnstown, by the way. This is just to remind you, this is like the very bottom of Johnstown. So I'm going to show you more. So stay tuned. Hold on. Okay, folks. So we're at Johnstown Park. And here's a statue of the founder of Johnstown. Joseph Johns, jo Joseph uh, Schantz, the founder of the city of Johnstown, citizens of German descent. So he was a German, uh, interesting. So this is the park and this is part of the flood. Uh, let me explain. So uh, because this picture is very worn down, let me read this really quick for you. On May 31st, 1889, Central Park was under 18 feet of water and tons of debris. Within a few days, however, the park was cleared of and transformed into a tent city to, to some of the 6,000 laborers and 580 members of the 14th uh, Pennsylvania Regiment who came to help clean up and rebuild. Most of the workers were sent by the Booth and Flynn Company of Pittsburgh to help remove uh, acres of debris, recover dead bodies, dispose of animal corpses, tear down dangerous structures, and clear the riverbeds. The state militia, directed by adjutant uh, General Daniel Hastings maintained order and co coordinated the distribution of supplies to the various relief agencies in the valley. Temporary shops eventually replaced the tent camps in the park, but throughout months of June, Johnstown was a cross between a mining town and a military camp. The park reopened in 1892. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, bad camera work, but let me uh, let me show you this video here. So I think that's an old picture, but the sign is, actually you can see the uh, letters pretty good, but the sign is uh, worn down. I just wanted to read it. So this is this is where the cleanup started at. And uh, of course, as you can tell, this was a tent city at one time uh, to help with the, the flood victims. And there was a lot of flood victims, trust me. A lot of families got completely uh, wiped out. Uh, the schoolhouse got wiped out, all the children died. So, I mean, it, it was just devastating. So anyway, um, and looks like they're getting ready for Halloween down here. So uh, there's more to come, so stay tuned, and please hit the subscribe button. Thanks. Okay, folks, so I'm at the, uh, the main bridge here. I'm going to walk down there and show you more of the bridge, but just to show you real quick. On May 31st, 1889, the main thrust of the 30-foot wave from the broken South Fork Dam smashed into the hillside to your left, which was right over here. Uh, sparing the PRR stone bridge from the full impact. The bridge held, its arches clogged with debris. The raging waters then cut a channel through the railroad embankment on the bridge's east side, leaving wreckage sprued, spread across 30 acres behind it. Escaped, the waters went on to something, half of the houses and the 115 people of the Connemaw River east side wiped out. 148 homes and 350 lives in Cambrian City on the west side. So the sign is so worn down, you can't really read it. So anyway, just let me show you. Um, for, I can remember some of the history when I went to the museums. So the flood waters came straight down here. Now these embankments, these concrete embankments weren't here. These were built back in the 30s and also in the 70s to control the floods because it was three major floods here in Johnstown. So um, long story short, we're gonna come down to the famous uh, haunted bridge of Johnstown. Um, they put a concrete facade on this side of it. On the other side of the bridge is still the old stone works that you can see. 
but this is where the main well I can't say the main casualties a lot of casualties happen here at this bridge because what happened is the water came down on both sides of these rivers here left side right side I think most of it was on the left side because the water came down and hit the left embankment and said it spared the bridge that's why the bridge didn't get destroyed <clears throat> so what happened was we're talking 30 feet 30 feet of water with debris came down here and got stuck against this bridge here and it piled up and it caught on fire and they said they pulled hundreds of bodies out alive but hundreds more didn't make it out and they burnt alive and the people said they can hear them screaming um, and there's nothing they could do so imagine this bridge here it's it's a good I would say close to 30 feet high okay so the debris was to the top of this bridge and again this uh, concrete facade wasn't here it was just stone bridge on the other side it's still stone bridge like I'm just repeating myself but so the the pile was higher than the bridge approximately and people did come and rescued is what the what what they could out of the pile because there was hundreds of bodies stuck in here but the other hundreds couldn't make it out they literally just burnt alive and drowned because everything that that the flood grabbed local motives uh, oil tanks you name it coal uh, a, a train full of coal everything and it, it, it was burning with water mixed in okay and these people were trapped in there and burnt to death you know that's why Johnstown is so haunted it really is haunted I know people who live here and told me stories so but this is this is where the the raging 30-foot wall of debris came down and uh, and and got stuck here and it held here for a long time and then bridge held this is the original bridge folks this is where the a lot of uh, people just died and of course the water spilled over onto this side and wiped out this whole neighborhood hundreds of houses that were here and killed hundreds more people so yeah so after three major floods finally they built these uh, concrete uh, embankments and um, and Johnstown hasn't really flooded since I think the last flood was 1977 and they just said okay that's enough you know every time they, they did something and but then finally that was the end of it uh, so that's it folks but listen we're not done yet okay we're going to um, go to the cemetery still and I don't know which order I'm gonna put these videos together but stay till the last of it okay so I still got the uh, video and top of the incline plane Johnson incline plane where many people were rescued from this uh, plane here so this is it this is the famous haunted bridge though just so you know that's it folks stay tuned till the end thanks okay, folks um, this is the other side of the bridge this is what the bridge looks like um, before they put the concrete uh, on the other side this is the original bridge that withstood the flood and it's very unique because uh, the way it was built let me walk over here and show you underneath the bridge this is a bike trail Yeah, so this is the Haunted, Haunted Bridge. Uh, I don't know if any of the uh, ghost shows, you know, the, I used to watch them all the time, fascinated by them. Uh, if they ever done a, uh, they ever done anything here? I don't know, maybe somebody should, maybe somebody watching it, you should uh, check into that. So look how it's built. It's literally, you know, on in these levels. It's really cool looking. This is it. So this is the famous haunted bridge, folks. Okay, till the next time. That's just some kids going through here, making noises. <laughs> it's not the ghost. Anyway, so and also just show you real quick. It's uh, there's uh some kind of industry old warehouse i don't think it even runs anymore i think it's or maybe partially okay folks stay tuned for the next okay welcome back to graveyard tours this is uh 
So we're doing this, uh, it's kind of, I don't know, it's not really a unknown, uh, we're at the unknown uh, names of the flood victims from 1889, Johnstown flood. So this is, uh, we're at the Grandview Cemetery and this is walking tour number four and it's, the street name is Unknown Plot. Okay, so we already know that thousands and thousands of people died during the Johnstown flood. And this cemetery was, uh, was made in uh, 1895 or something, I can't remember. Uh, but they, uh, they took many of the unknown victims that they never found names to, uh, supposedly 777 of them. And all these markers here that you're seeing in front of you represents uh, the burial. Uh, but, you know, the rumors are that, you know, it just seems like strange that the number is 777. It might have been less, it might have been more. Nobody really knows, to be honest with you. Uh, but this is it, folks. This is where all the unknown uh, names came from. I mean, we're buried here. There's other, I, I've done other videos um, at, at the Grandview here. I've done several videos here at the Grandview because this place is just gigantic. It's over a hundred acres. It's huge. I mean, if you can, you can see around, I mean, it's just, it, you literally, you get lost out here. You need a map. You need a map. So it's, uh, First couple of times I came out here, I got lost and literally drove around. I mean, you know, you're gonna find your way, but uh, that's how big this place is. So this is um, this is the final resting place for many of these victims. So I I accidentally, when I first discovered the cemetery, I accidentally um, found a memorial stone and thought that the victims were buried there. So they have another memorial here, uh, way in the back, way back there somewhere where that tree line is, way in the back. So, and I accidentally uh, assumed that uh, that was where they buried the 777 victims, which, which I heard about, but no, they are right here. So the Johnstown flood again was uh, a terrible tragedy and putting this little mini documentary together I had to show you where you know the, the proper place is uh, where the flood victims uh, some of the uh, interestingly and not I've done other videos and I never put it together until uh, recently that uh, once out here in Johnstown uh, where they have a lot of graveyards everywhere periodically you will see a tombstone that says uh, drowned, the victim, you know, the person drowned, where they had the name and everything, where the family was able to find them and claim them. So uh, then recently I found out that where it says drowned, that means it was from the Johnstown Great Flood. Uh, of, of course it was uh, uh, in the same year. So anyway, so that I, I discovered that later later on so some of my facts can be a little misconstrued or I'm not lying I just you know got some of the facts wrong here and there every once in a while but I do the best I can so hopefully you uh, like this video and hit the subscribe and the like button leave any comments too if you if you want to but this is it folks this is where um, so we went to many places um, if you uh, st hopefully you stay to watch the whole video because that way you see all the places I went to to show by the Johnstown flood because uh, we went to um, many places went to the dam site and uh, if you watch the video you've seen it and uh, we went to the haunted bridge uh, the next place I'm going to go to is called the Johnstown um, inclined plane where basically I'm just going to show you the um, the whole of Johnstown you can see all of Johnstown from there and just to let you know that uh, this place is big. That is deer poop there, folks. That's uh, so, I mean, this place is, you know, it has its own, 
uh, has it, I mean, the place is over 100 acres. It's like 130 acres. I can't remember exactly. I used to know the exact number. But uh, yeah, it's, it's huge. And deer come out here at night to feed. And this is inter interesting. I don't know why this, some of these headstones are much taller than the others. Perhaps um, they're all this size and uh, these popped out of the ground through frost. Uh, frost pushed them up or something. But every once in a while you'll see one that's uh, higher. And of course you can see that there's no names on any of these headstones because nobody knows the names of these poor souls. So uh, they never identified. Like I said, many people did get identified. Many did not. You know, a lot of people, if you watch the video on the Haunted Bridge, where uh, hundreds of souls were killed there, uh, a lot of them just literally burnt alive. They were trapped in the, the debris. They couldn't get rescued out. And, uh, you know, the news story says that uh, uh, many were rescued and pulled out of the debris, but many others, hundreds, they said, hundreds of others couldn't get out of the debris and people heard them screaming all night long. So it was a horrible tragedy. You know, they got stuck in the debris, they got washed out of their houses or cl clinging on to some debris and got uh, brought down to the, uh, brought down to the uh, bridge where it, it got clogged up and uh, that's where a lot of them died. And, so anyway, so some uh, so many bodies got burnt so badly that uh, some of the other news stories, if you go to the museums, you can read where they said they, they couldn't even tell if they were male or female anymore. They were burnt that bad. So, you know, they just, you know, some of these people here probably are in a group of, uh, you know, other family members found that their family members died, but the, they just couldn't identify the bodies. So I guess that's that they got placed here so so like I said it's a suspicious number 777 uh, we don't know nobody can prove or disprove it was that's an exact number but uh, that's what they claim so and I'm not gonna count every headstone out here I just feel sorry for these poor souls may they all rest in peace now uh, but there's quite a few of them out here uh, but yeah so uh, if you like I said if you get a chance come see the uh, Museums come out to the dam and uh, uh, You know and uh, uh, Get the information the history because it's a lot of history and I'm not getting paid for this to do this uh, Little documentary. It's just part of my channel. I, uh, I'm just trying to get some subscribers and I enjoy doing this and also the history of it It's it's fun. It's fun. So I've been in the museums, but I wasn't allowed to go in there this time uh, to do any filming so I never that was before I started my channel but uh, but that's it folks so stay tuned to the end of the end of the uh, uh, video because I'm putting a bunch of small videos together and so stay tuned to watch the whole thing you can get all the information it's going to be uh, a little bit longer than what I usually do but, uh, I just thought it was important and I thought it would be interesting for a lot of you so if you would hit that subscribe button that like button leave a comment if you want and uh, that's it. So we're going to go on to the next place. Thanks for watching. Okay, now for the final destination of Graveyard Tours on this channel. Please subscribe. All right, we're at the incline plane, the top of the incline plane. And this is Johnstown. This is the city that got wiped out 1889, was it? Yeah. Where the flood happened. The first, it's been actually three floods, but uh, this is the town that got wiped out. So somewhere down there, I think, is the museum, Johnstown Flood Museum, that I included in the video. So uh, the Haunted Bridge is, let's see, I believe it might be down that way somewhere. Not really sure. But anyway... Can't, I don't know which direction. I believe it's down that way. You can't really see it. You can't see it from here. It's around the corner over there. So this is it. This is where the big flood happened. And of course, uh, not much. I think it was like five or six buildings that survived only. That was it. They had to completely rebuild the whole town. So this is where it all happened, folks. You get a good bird's eye view right here from this. Okay, so that's it. Signing out. 
please subscribe, hit the like button, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, so I'm in the uh, one of the uh, the incline plane. The incline plane is out there. Uh, what was out outside there? And this just shows you a little bit more inside the little museum part here. So let's go. Okay, so here we go. So let's just say, before you is the central business district of Dodge Town, located between Little Connemaw and Stony Creek Rivers. The city is a mix of old and new. The plan of downtown Johnstown dates from 1800 when Joseph Schantz Johns did the original survey. Only a few buildings remain that date before the Great Flood of 1889. Much of the Town, downtown was built in the decades following the disaster. Johnstown Iron and Steel Industry began at the Cambry Iron Works to your left and spread up down the Connemo. Okay, so that's down there. The Steel and Iron Works is down there. And this is just a, a map. Okay, so now, like I said, it's just a little area here that shows a lot of this stuff is, is about Johnstown, not about the flood. So I'm going to just try to go into the show some of the flood stuff here, but it just gives you a plain view. And there are some pictures here. This is the 1936 flood. March 17, 1936 flood right there. You can see the whole town is in the water. Um, this is the picture, a view of Johnstown from the inclined plane from where we're standing now. After the 1989 flood, Johnstown quick, quickly recovered and rebuilt. Okay, so it looks like quite a few buildings this is after. It doesn't give a date though, so it looks like everything got rebuilt. And this is a picture of the 1977 flood. And well, that's a celebration downtown. Okay, so up here, I just saw, uh, it says, on May 31, 18, the legendary Johnstown flood devastated the city, claiming 2,209 lives. So here's a picture. Okay, folks, that's it. So if you get a chance, come visit and see all these sites. Here's a giant map. Well, I don't know when this was taken on Johnstown. So that, that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed the, the channel. And hit the subscribe and like button if you would for me. Help support me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching.